Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for joining me today. As always, it's lovely to have your company and share a, a little bit of crafty time with you. I hope this video finds you well. Um, and yeah, let's have a, have a bit of fun. Today, I thought I'd do another Christmas card. You know, I'm, I'm well on with my Christmas cards. My box is nearly full, but I just wanted to put a, another spin on it. So we're going to do a little bit of spot lighting. Now, I know we always have new members joining us, which is lovely. It's so lovely to have new people um, joining our Lavinia family. Now, spotlighting just means highlighting an area of a card. Now, this can be either adding colour to the area or actually having that area in black and white, but the rest of the card in colour. And what we quite often would do is create a design like this one um, and then cut out a circle of card, pop the design on top and actually um, decoupage the circle. But I thought, you know what, we've got our circle masks. Let's see if we can do this so it's all flat. So this is a flat piece of card look, but I almost wanted to look like we'd spotlighted and cut a piece of card out. So I thought we'd have a go at that. Sometimes I think it's nice to do something a little bit different and a little bit challenging. But also I'm using all the stamps that are out on my desk. And again, I thought if you regularly make your Christmas cards for friends and family, this is just maybe a different design that you could add into your, your little arsenal ready for Christmas. So that's the idea. And I must admit, when I got my Christmas stamps out, I've got so many stamps here and I've not used half of them. So I'm going to do this design, but using different stamps. So I'm starting off, as always, I'm using a six by six card blank. Now, if you're struggling, I know certainly where I live here in Cheshire, a lot of our craft shops and uh, garden centres are, are having trouble getting card blanks. Lavinia do sell card blanks and they've got some lovely six by six ones. So just heads up there. So I'm using Multifairies card stock and this is five and a half inches by five and a half. Again, I just find it's a really good size for my six by six. And again, when I'm posting, I know this is just a normal stamps required for this. So I've got to be honest, that's why I do this size. Also, I like this size. I think for sort of everyday um, Christmas cards it's a good size but also with this you know do remember you could actually make a larger card there's no reason why this you couldn't do it on a larger piece of card and just have more stamping here and actually put this on a, a seven by seven and eight by eight I mean I think a lovely bow here a nice ribbon lovely red ribbon that would just look beautiful I mean you could almost if you wanted turn this into a bauble and put a bit of ribbon here and a bow now, maybe have a go at that. Maybe put that on and tag me in. Again, like I say, I do find once I start creating, my mind just, you know, I, I tend to be a blank and think, oh, what can I do different for Christmas? Start creating and you know what? Like I say, I think I just have one of those minds. So what we'll do first, we'll do a little bit of stamping. You know, I like to do my stamping first. And I must admit, I'm coming in with this beautiful berry wreath stamp. And I'm going to use my black, my Versafine Claire, my Nocturne, because the idea is that my design is black and white and I'm going to do my spotlight by adding the colour. So I'm just thinking we need a couple of these. Now, I'm probably not going to get them in the same place as I did on my original because, do you know what, I don't know about you, but I have great difficulty doing the same design twice. But also, to be honest, I, I tend not to want to do the exact same design twice because I like to think that each card I do um, is, is a design in its own merit and is special for the person I'm making it for. So I do like to add a little twist to each one. Now, again, I've just got my inky binker here because I've just got a little bit of ink on there. Now, I'm thinking, let's go with the shape. I want one here and don't worry about the gaps because that's where our pound stamps are going to come in and join this whole design together and I know I want some more of this over here and in fact I think I'll just come in with another one here A 
then that way I'm keeping the design over that way. Now I've got a holly stamp here and it's not the pound holly stamp. It's, um, I think it's just called holly and it's a little bit larger. And again, I find this one very useful. Now again, when you're doing this sort of design, remember, I know I keep saying, but use your acetate. So for example, here, we've got a branch just checking you can see we've got a branch that's floating and we don't want that so if we pop the holly there look that hides the fact that we've got a floating branch so again use your acetate it is very useful now the beauty of this design you could actually leave it black and white and not do your spotlight depending on you know and that way you could make a few of these And as you know, this stamp makes a gorgeous wreath. Looks beautiful stamped in green. So if you want to get a bit of the shady lady out. I mean, it's just such a versatile and it matches beautifully with your pound holly as well. And I think because it's got the depth, we need a bit of almost darkness here got to start and look at our balance now we need a little bit up here just so we can balance the design just that one and it's always nice to have the design coming off the edge now do I want another one here and I'm not sure so let me bring my acetate in Yes, actually, I think that looks nice, doesn't it? It just brings it, yeah. I think it looks like it's missing it there. That just carries it on nicely. When I started off, it never, you know, it just didn't occur to me to use the acetate. And the number of times I stamped a design and thought, oh, you shouldn't have done that. So at least with the acetate, you get that choice. So we're thinking of putting that there, weren't we? Notice I say we, so if it's not right, it's the royal we. Now, I want to come in with this gorgeous little, and do forgive me, I forget what this is called. It might be a pound berry. Oh, I've not written it on my acetate. That's that's naughty me. I need to check what this one's called, but I love this. It's I really love it because I can colour it in. I've got to be honest. So I'm going to stamp a few of these. And again, we'll just pop one there, just popping in. Now, really, again, I need to look where I could hang them. So let's have one there. And again, remember, you keep a nice shape. I always think it's a bit like um, being a florist. I think I'm a, I'm a frustrated uh, watercolour artist because I love playing with paint, inks, water, but I can't watercolour paint. And I think I'm a frustrated florist because I love to almost make my floral cards and floral designs, but obviously I'm not a florist, am I? But it's almost my little, my little way of pretending. See, I like that. Do we need one over here again? Come on, acetate, help me out. Ah, yeah, that shape's better, right? So I need to... And again, Mr. Inky Bink is on my knee, ready for when I need him. So what did we say about there, didn't we? Yeah. Then we definitely need one down here, just to add that balance. You see, that looks nice. And then, yeah, one there. I'm thinking all the time of a nice balance, but also, I know I often use that phrase of a pizza, but I, I want to remember that I don't want to cover the whole card. I want to keep a little bit of white space somewhere where my eye can rest. There we go. So, Mr Pound Holly now, just to fill in some spaces. Not all of them, but again, just keeping mindful of keeping that nice design a little bit here. And I know that's only a touch, but, you know, it wouldn't look right without it. And sometimes you just have to be mindful of these things. So we'll just have a, a couple more, maybe one coming from there. Mm, 
Now I've got a mark there, so let's see if we can just pop some holly over that. And the fact we can just, let's have a look, how can we, yep, yeah. there we go. Nobody will ever know that was there, because you won't tell them, will you? And I won't tell them. Right, just a little bit there and we're done. We don't want to spoil it. We don't want to have too much. Sometimes it's nice just in that simplicity itself. Now, if ever you're stamping this, say, here, look. I could say I've done it on purpose. There, my, my branch doesn't quite join up. Again, your black fine liner. And we'll just add. There we go. And nobody will ever know that that wasn't there. So I always have my black fine liner ready. And then I love the Christmas charms. And just to finish off here, and again, the beauty of this is it won't overcomplicate it. I just need to turn it this way. And I'm thinking that space there, see that wood doesn't look right with that holly, but that there is almost a perfect space for that. And that just look, oh yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, like I say, I've got to be honest, you could leave this as a design in itself in black and white, and I think it looks beautiful. Now, I'm just going to blot this, because again, my Versafine Claire, it's a slow drying ink, try and get in good habits. If I don't blot it, when we next just add a little bit of colour, it would all smudge. Little bits come off, not a lot, but honestly, it's not worth taking that risk of it smudging. Now, to add some colour, so I'm just going to wipe my hands. Important to try and keep your hands nice and clean. So, to add our colour, we're going to use the circular mask. Now, again, depending on how much colouring, depends which one of these you want to use. Let me just get my and show you what I mean. If you wanted to just do it spotlight a little area, because we're just using the inside, and it's probably not easy for you to see, because obviously the see-through, we could just spotlight a small area. And in fact, I might do that on this one so that you can see the difference. Or, oh, you see, shall I do the larger one? I do like the larger one. But no, no, to show you... No, 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 I will. Oh, see, are you like this or is this just me? You see, I do think the smaller one would look lovely. Do you know what? We'll go for the smaller one. Just so I can show you how you could. So choose an area. And I'm thinking, let's go for that area. And I'm going to use my Elements ink and I'm going for Bermuda. This really has become such a favourite colour. Now, as always... Lavinia stencil brush, tapping in the ink. And instead of tapping it on my mat, I'm just going to tap it on my, um, just the space of my circular mask. And I'm going to start at this bottom right hand corner because that's where I want my deepest colour. And I'm just going to flick a little bit of colour. And I'm coming all the way around. I'm going over my berries. It's not a problem. And I'm almost doing a bit of a sort of circular motion. And I'm going to come in and just add some nice light colour. Because I've taken a lot of the colour off already, always wait to come into the middle until you've less colour on your brush. And let me just lift that up and have a look. And I just want it a bit deeper in this corner. I'm just going to come in and flick a little bit more here. It's just going to help with my spotlight effect. There we go. And I'm happy with that. So as I say, whichever size of these you use, and it uses very little ink, but do make sure you give it a wipe. I've got a wet cloth here. And then I'm just going to come in with my inky binky and dry it. Put that to one side. And now we're going to add some colour. And you're only going to colour what's in this circle. Now, this is where you have to be mindful because if you're anything like me, you start colouring and wander out. I'm going to rest on my kitchen towel here. 
I'm going to come in first with a couple of the Ink Tense pencils. Now, as you know, I love these. You add water to these. And I'm going to do these little berries that in my head are rose hips. So I'm going to do those a red. And I've put a darker red at the bottom. Again, that will just help for me with, with shade. And then any little holly berries, I'm just going to come in. And again, I'm only colouring the ones in the circle. I think that's all I've got in this, with this being a smaller circle. So I've got my, stem, my um, lovely watercolour brush. And again, this is number one. As you know, it's the one. It's a big favourite of mine. Now, I'm just going to colour in these berries and the ink tense is activated with the water now when you color in your larger berry go to the lighter color first that's the red and then blend down into the deeper color the darker brown and it really does activate that look at that beautiful color so that's one way of adding color now another way of adding color is our lovely glaze our beautiful glaze pens now again i'm going to start in the middle and just work my way round. So you can use whatever you like. Now again, I'm turning the work, but I'm always starting sort of in the middle and then working towards me. And these are absolutely beautiful and it sort of dries with it. Obviously a, a glaze effect, hence the cold glaze. <laughs> And I've just turned the work again. But there are lots of different ways. So it's however you like to colour. I mean, after all, you want to enjoy your crafting. So you choose a method. And you don't have to, you know, it's like this. I'm using the glaze pens and the ink tents. You don't have to just use one. I just wanted to almost make it look like there's different types of berries. Now, obviously, while I'm talking to you, I've got to be mindful to stop on the edge here and not carry on adding colour. I'm sure you'll shout, won't you? Tell me to stop. Right, have I missed any? I think that one up there just needs a little bit more, doesn't it? Right, I think we've got all those. So I'm going to come in now with a gold. So these are your little finishing touches. So with my gold, Signal, I'm not going to use a white. I'm going to add the highlight. With this being Christmas, I thought the gold would be beautiful. So where we've got that lovely highlight look, Tracy's drawn it for us on the holly. So I'm just going to, and on some of these branches look, as I say, with it being Christmas, I'm thinking let's add a little bit of sparkle bit of gold now the larger the circle you do the larger the spotlight if i bring in the original obviously the more coloring so it really depends how much coloring you want to do and how many of these you're going to make i mean you could batch card make three or four and then do almost like some some really special ones with, with the larger circle as i say it, it's very much I mean, the lovely thing is you just do exactly. Now, we need a little white highlight on there, don't we? Maybe just a couple of dots. Just white highlight on those berries. And then just to help our circle, make it look like we've um, decoupaged our piece of card, I'm going to come in with the chalk pastel pencils. And I've got the black one here. And I'm just going. So this is the corner where I'm going to have my shade. I'm just going to use my, pen, my, my finger here and I'm just using the white at the edge here almost just as a little almost like a blending tool and then I want it darker in this corner because again that's where I'm going to have my shade so it looks like it's 3D I'm hoping that shows up and I don't want to go all the way around, just sort of to here and here. I'll just fuzzy that a bit. Now again, you can use a blending stump, you can use a cotton bud for this. I'm just using my finger. 
and then just again you play I, I tend to mess and mess and mess I just want that a little bit darker there that corner there I'm happy with that so that's my chalk pastel pencils now I want to add a sentiment here and I must admit what I tend to do is I've got my gorgeous spirit of Christmas stamp she says here now one little tip I put a an arrow on the back of my stamp look because for me I always do it with my word stamps because I don't want to stamp it upside down and the other thing is, what I do is any off cuts, especially strips, when I'm cutting card, I use those and I stamp my sentiments on them. Because if I'm stamping a sentiment once, I might as well stamp it a few times. And then I love this because I cut it up. So obviously it says, may the spirit of Christmas bring you peace. The gladness of Christmas give you hope and the warmth of Christmas grant you love. But you see, for me, I love the spirit of Christmas, the gladness of Christmas and the warmth of Christmas just on their own. So you can use the whole sentiment or I like to cut it up and I'm sure Tracy won't mind. So this one, I'm going to put this one. I'm just going to put the spirit of Christmas. But you see, also, we've got the words peace, hope and love. They would look nice. Peace, hope, love. So for me, out of one um, actual sentiment, I can get a lot of smaller sentiments and that I'm going to pop there. So I'm just going to get some glue. Now you could put your black Sharpie line round it before you stick it down if you want. But again, just because then we show you lots of different things, I'm going to stick that. Let me just wipe my hands. And then all I'm going to do is come in with my fine liner and do a bit of a squiggle. And again, don't overthink this. You just literally do a squiggle. And we'll have a bit of the heart monitor. There we go. And don't overthink it there. Perfect. Now, lastly, we want a little bit of snow in here. And again, I can hear you saying, but how are you going to do that? And again, really simple. Get your mask back your circular mask, pop it over there and I'm just going to bring in my kitchen towel, she says. And I'm just going to mask off these areas. Look at this no expense bed, I didn't get another piece of kitchen towel, I've just torn the one up. You see, once a crafter, always a crafter. Now with your Posca, always give it a good shake and a few people have said they can't get the splats it's a pump action so if your posca won't um splat pop it on your, your actual mat look and pump it it's a pump action so just it just needs pumping sometimes to activate it so a good shake and a pump action and then just literally want some snow now a bit of a snow flurry i don't want a blizzard I just want to keep it in there. There we go. Perfect. Now, carefully lift these up, she says. And carefully lift this up. And again, this, I've got a damp cloth. Just give it a quick wipe. I mean, the beauty of these masks, you know, they will take so much. And I'm just going to dry it with my Inky Binky. And then it's ready to pop away, look, and use again. And that is all there is to it, ladies and gents. So I'm just going to stand up. If I bring in my original and open it up for you, as I like to do. And if we pop that one there, move the ink out of the way. There we go. And again, it's nice because you can see the difference in the size, depending which mask you use, deciding which spotlight you want to create. As I say, maybe it's a bauble. 
So I'm hoping you've enjoyed that. And I think for me, if I when I give this to people, I'm sure they're going to look and think we've actually 3D that. And it's lovely when you get people's reactions when they realise it's flat. So I'm hoping you have a go at that. I'm hoping it's given you a little bit of inspiration. So thank you for joining me as always. And for those of you that are struggling at the minute, I'm sending you a special hug. I'm coming in just for you. So you take care. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.